Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and today we are finally doing a tutorial on this look right here. I actually really enjoy this look. It's too bad I have nowhere to go today because I'm digging this look you guys. Like I can't wait to have, I don't know, like somewhere to go where I can recreate this and do it all over again because I really really like this look. Um, I used the Juvia's Place Magic Palette for this look today as well as a couple of my Sugar Pill eyeshadows. Um, so it's really really easy. I hope you guys like it, enjoy, you learn something cool, new, um, a new technique and until next time. Bye guys. So I'm going to start things off a little bit differently today. I normally do my brows after I do foundation and I decided that I'm going to do my brows first and then work my way down to the eyes and then with my foundation. So I'm going to speed through this because um, this is going to take a little while. So I'm going to speed through my eyebrows and then I'll go ahead and come back for the eyes. And just um, really quick, I used the MAC Cosmetics NW20 Studio Finish a Foundation, or I'm sorry, concealer, um, to kind of clean up and sharpen that bottom line. And then I'm going to go ahead and use that as my eyeshadow base as well. I will set that after. It is pretty drying, so I don't really need to set it too, too much. And then I'm going to go ahead and use the Anastasia Beverly Hills dip brow in the shade chocolate just for the bottom and then I'm gonna go ahead in with my the brow gal convertible kit number two for the upper So today we are going to be using the Juvia's Place, what palette is this? The Magic Palette um, from Juvia's Place. So I'm going to take this shade right here, it's called Kessie to set that concealer. Um, you can grab any skin color shade that you like. Um, if, it, if you do notice that your concealer or your base does crease, just kind of go over it with your finger. With the warmth of your finger, it should go ahead and blend out. Um, so I'm just going to basically put that all over the place. This is a no-name brush from a who knows what brand. Um, when I first started doing makeup, I just ordered, you know, like cheap kits from Amazon. Um, and so this is just like a little kabuki slanted brush. Uh, the kit was like $11 and it came with like eight brushes. And this was a couple years ago and this brush has actually held up pretty well. Um, the only thing that I would say that I wish these palettes had, even though these are cool because they have, you know, a little design on the inside, I do wish they had mirrors um, and a mirror this size would be pretty cool. So I'm going to go ahead and use my Morphe M441 brush and I just cleaned it up with whatever excess um, eyeshadow I had with my Mer uh, Mera, my Vera Mona um, duo brush thingy. Now I will be using the Juvia's Place palette but there actually isn't a shadow in there that I would use as a transition shade. So I'm going to use from Sugar Pill this shade right here and it is called Home Sweet Home. Now, what I like these palettes and I don't like these palettes because it's really hard to tell what colors you're gonna use. So with um, um, a labeler machine that I borrowed from work, I just put all the names on the back of my palette so I know what they are. Um, so I'm gonna be using this one here. It's called Home Sweet Home. And you can use as little or as much of this color as you want. You won't really be able to see it in the end, um, but as you can tell, I'm just going very, very lightly with it um, and adding in a little bit at a time. That neutral shade that we did add 
in the beginning to set the concealer will definitely help with the blending out process. And I am bringing this all the way to the inner corner because we will be adding a darker blue in there a little bit later. And just for the sake of it being a little bit more blue, um, I'm going to go ahead and add also from Sugar Pill the Kimchi Shadow, which is, if you guys don't know what that looks like, that is this more um, brighter shade right here. Um, so this is the first one that, we'll, that we used, and then I'm going to go ahead and use this darker shade. Um, it's a little bit brighter. And again, I'm just going to basically put that a little bit lower than that first transition shade that I had put down. And again, bringing that into the inner corner. And as you can tell, I'm depositing more of the color on the outside and the inner corner and kind of leaving this part here a little bit softer. Just because I want that halo effect to really, really pop when we do go in with that darker blue and middle shade a little bit later. And this look is pretty easy, you guys. It's all about blending and just adding in a little bit of color at a time. Um, and really just kind of playing with what kind of eye shape you have I used to not like doing halo eyes because my eyes are really small and they kind of droop down a little bit. I didn't really think the shape of um, eyeshadow was flattering on my eye shape, but I like halo eyes. I think they're really cool. Now moving on to the Juvia's Place palette, and I don't think I mentioned it, I will only be using about four eyeshadow brushes um, for this look. So this next brush that I'm going to use, I thought it was a Morphe brush, but actually it is a known, another no-name brush, and I think it's from one of the kits that I took from a makeup class uh, that I had when I was in school. And it's just a small pencil brush, and I'm going to go ahead and dip into the shades, uh, they're backwards, Life and Yeheti. So these blue, very deep blue shades, more like indigo. These two right here, they look very similar, um, but I'm just going to go ahead and mix those two and add in a little bit at a time and same with that, with the same technique from, I'm like all over the place guys, it's been a while since I've done this, um, with that same technique, depositing more on the outside and inner corner and leaving that top a little bit um, bare. And then I'm going to go back in with that Morphe brush um, and not really cleaning it, just whatever um, color is on it and just kind of blending it out a little bit so it's not too harsh and it blends into those other colors pretty seamlessly. If you do lose a little bit of that darkness, you can go ahead and add a little bit more blue if you'd like. I will be going in with a black in a little bit so it's really not necessary. If you don't want to add black, then you can just keep adding the blue if you'd like. And it's okay, like I've mentioned it before, if you have seen my videos, it's okay if it's messy, especially in this outside corner, um, because we will be cleaning that up with eyeliner in a little bit. I keep getting really thrown off by these contacts because they're really, really light. Um, but I actually think they're pretty cool. If you do find that you lose a little bit of that lighter blue, you can go ahead and add it in. Um, I'm not going to just quite yet. I want to see what it looks like when I do finish adding in the black at the end. So I'm pretty happy with the amount of blue that I have. So I'm going back in with my Sugar Pill palette. Now this is a custom palette, obviously I did buy all these colors separately. I'm going to go in with this shade right here, it is called Bulletproof, which is just a matte black. And same with that No Name Pencil Brush, I'm just going to add in a little bit to both the inner and outer corner. So I'm 
pretty happy with how this looks. Um, I didn't want to add too much black. It's just to have a little bit more depth in the eye. Now I'm going back in with this shade right here in the corner. It's called Fazo. And I'm just going to swatch this for you guys because you guys have to see this. This is so pretty um, before I add it. So if you look at this shade, it's like a really pretty shimmery kind of duochrome. It's got pink and purple. It's really, really pretty. And I'm going to go ahead and add that to the middle part of the eye. I'm going to add it in with my finger first, and then I'm going to go ahead and blend it out with a brush. Um, you can definitely add glitter glue or like a stronger adhesive to make it pop. I'm going to go ahead and try it out with just whatever's on there first and see how it looks. So I'm also going to grab, it's, I have like no name brand brushes in this tutorial. This is like a little unicorn brush, also got it on Amazon. Um, there was like a little kit of, I think like 12 brushes and it came with a whole bunch of different ones. Now if you do notice that you lose some of those colors, you can just go back in and kind of add them back in. So I'm grabbing a little bit more of those blues and just making sure that it is dark enough and blended out here in the corners. Because we do want kind of the inside or middle shade to pop. And then I'm gonna go ahead and grab again that brush, that Morphe brush, and I'm going to clean it up a little bit with my Veramona and just kind of buff out those edges so they're not super harsh. So I'm going to do my eyeliner off camera because you guys already know I cannot do my eyeliner on camera and then I'll be right back. So for my eyeliner today, I did use the NYX Cosmetic um, Epic Ink Liner. And for my lashes, I'm going to use Ardell Lashes Demi Wispy and Studio FX. These are probably, if not my favorite lashes. They're so easy to put on. They feel really, really comfortable. And I don't know, like, I've tried so many high-end, like, lashes and... To be honest, I always end up going back to Ardell. Um, these Studio Effect lashes are probably, I don't know, I think they're the best, in my opinion. So, and I'm also trying out a new lash glue. This is from Tarte in Clear, so we shall see. Okay, so, not for the face. So I picked up another Milani Make It Last setting spray. Now this is the Prime Correct um, spray. So this bottle is a little bit different than the other one. The other one's a dewy spray. And I'm going today, if I could find my foundation, uh, I'm going to be using the Hourglass foundation. And this is in the shade Warm Honey. And I'm not going to color correct. I probably should, but this foundation is full enough where I can get away with it. And I'm just going to use this technique of putting them basically anywhere. And I do my foundation in sections, so I'm going to do the bottom half first, and then I'm going to go ahead and do the top. I'm going to spray my sponge a little bit. It seems a little bit dry. Um, and then I'm just going to pounce that in. I think my settings are a little bit off on my camera. At least in my, um, like in my monitor, it does look like I'm very ghostly white. Um, but I am not that way in reality. 
you guys can tell, you can still see a lot of my, um, that's a terrible angle. You can still see a lot of my, like, acne scars. What I like about this foundation is you can definitely add a little bit more and it won't look super cakey. So I'm just going to add a little bit more in the areas that I need it. Um, and then I'll work on my forehead last. So this is the tricky part because I normally do my eyebrows last and because I did my eyebrows first, I have to be really careful with not getting any foundation on my eyebrows or my hair. For my concealer, I'm going to use an oldie but a goodie, you guys. I brought it back, and this is the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer in number 20. And I'm just adding this into the inner corner, and then we're going to add a different one for the rest. I forgot how much I love this concealer, and I feel like um, once like Shape Tape came out, everybody kind of started talking about it and just started talking about Shape Tape. Um, but to be honest, this is really heavy for me for the inner corner. So what I like to do is just a little bit. I'll just add two little swipes to the outside and that'll be it. And then I'm going to go ahead. I like to make sure that I have my, um, my setting powder ready. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up. And um, this is the Barely Sheer Translucent Powder. I'm just going to tap that down to make sure everything's on the bottom before I blend out my concealer. I swear concealer definitely brings your whole look together. Like, especially right now, I'm really tired. So it's just, it's definitely making a big difference. So I'm just gonna go ahead and dip my beauty blender into my translucent powder and set under the eye. I'm not really baking. Um, I am adding a little bit extra and then I will dust that off in a second. I find that for my type of skin tone, I or skin tone, I'm sorry, skin type, I can't really bake or else it'll get really, really dry. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just set roughly the rest of my face with that same powder on my beauty blender. I don't really set everywhere and basically what I'll do is I'll grab a powder brush and I will just kind of dust the rest of that off. I don't mind that you can still see a couple of my acne scars or blemishes or things like that because um, we're human and nobody has perfect skin. At least I haven't seen anybody that has perfect skin yet. Everybody will still use foundation, concealer, so yeah. So then I'm going in with my Ivy Beauty contour palette. Oh my gosh, the hair and it's itchy. Do you guys ever just grab your beauty blender and wherever it itches on your face you kind of just like pounce it out instead of scratching so you don't mess up your makeup okay, much better so I'm going to grab my morphe m437 brush and I'm just going to as usual just mix it up and this is going to bronze and contour and I was thinking that this um, kit was breaking me out just because I was getting breakouts right here where I bronze and I've been using this palette a lot so I think I'm going to as much as I love it because it is definitely um, you know it's really easy to blend out I think there's something in it that is breaking me out so it's okay if it's messy like this side is a hot mess we're gonna fix that and blend it out and I'm also going to clean out the bottom. So again with that translucent powder, I'm just going to bring it down right there. Just 
just to clean up the bottom. And for blush today, I'm going to be using my Tarte palette. And I'm going to be using the shade Icon, which is this purpley shade right here. On the apples of my cheeks. So we're going to go ahead and blend that out. I'm just going to grab my powder brush. And this is a Wet n Wild brush. And I'm just going to blend that out. Now, if you're going to wear this out, I don't know why I did air quotes for going out. If you're going to wear this out like every day, you can definitely use a more neutral highlighter. I'm going to add a little bit of my Mel Cosmetics highlighter in Stargazer. And just to show you guys how pretty this highlighter is. We have texture and that's okay you guys and we will work on the bottom lash line in a second but just to show you guys what this look would look like if it was a more wearable look um, so you can definitely just leave it like this I'm gonna go ahead in with my Kat Von D Alchemist palette and I'm gonna go in with the shade let's do a little bit of ultraviolet we're going in on this look and I really just wanted to hit maybe that top temple right there yeah Ooh, that's pretty okay and I think what I'm gonna do too is I'm just gonna go ahead and tap a little bit of that on that there we go Ooh, did you see how much of a difference that made okay Okay, yes, I'm digging this look right now. So you can definitely just leave it like this. Obviously, add on a lipstick, call it a day, you're good to go. Me, I am going to basically mimic what's on the top to my bottom lash line. So I'm going to be using this other smaller pencil brush from Morphe, and it is the M431 brush. And again, I need a mirror because one. And I'm gonna be using that to be my transition to the bottom. So I'm going to put that on the outside and inner corner. It really doesn't matter if it gets on the inside as much. You can definitely bring this down a little bit more if you want to and then back in with the Juvia's back in with the Juvia's Place palette I'm gonna go in with this shade right here and this shade back here in the corner and I'm gonna try to put that as close to my lash line as I possibly can and I'm okay with dragging my inner corner like way down. I think I gotta fix it a little bit. Um, make it a little bit more even. Because I have some serious bags under my eyes today. And then I'm gonna go ahead and again wipe off my brush in my Veramona. And I'm gonna go in with, um, with that purpley shade that we started with. I might have to wet my brush a little bit. I'm just gonna use that um, Milani spray and see if that makes a difference. And it's not as bright as I want it to be, so we're gonna go ahead and add a little bit of that Cat Von D Alchemist palette as well. So I'm gonna go ahead with the Ultraviolet in Amethyst just in the center that really pops oh my god I didn't even add mascara today what is wrong with me I'm all over the place did I even bring it with me <sighs> I just you guys why don't you remind me anyways I'm gonna go ahead and I was like why does it look so weird I'm gonna add just a little bit of mascara to my top lashes to help them blend and then I'm gonna add a little bit 
to the bottom lashes and I'm using this new mascara from Rimmel and it is Clump Free Volume Shake It Fresh Volume Mascara. So I saw it, I was intrigued because you shake it and it's got like a little thingy in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and add just a little bit to my top lashes. And then I'm gonna add a coat. Big um, brush heads like this kind of scare me for the bottom lashes. Because I don't want them, they usually get kind of on your eyeshadow. What I like to do is just use the front of it, um, not the whole barrel, just the tip, just the tip, to kind of get really in there on those lashes. And for the lips today, I'm also going to be using from Kat Von D. I'm going to line my lips with the Everlasting Lip Liner in Scully. And to finish that off, I'm going to go ahead and just douse myself in that Milani. Oh, it feels so good. And I know that I got mascara right there. So I I think I'm, I, ha I got an idea from that fuck up. So I just need to go get it and I'll be right back. Don't you hate when that happens, when you're almost done and then you get a little bit of the mascara from your bottom lashes? So I picked this eyeliner up at Forever 21. I've posted a couple of times on Instagram and it is a dual ended eyeliner. It has a regular tip and then it has a star tip on the other side. And this is cheating by the way you guys because you can definitely draw in a star by yourself. I'm just going to stamp it on there, wish me luck. And the reason why I say luck is because even if you stamp too hard, you'll get a circle around it. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my concealer brush and I'm going to clean that with the smallest amount of concealer if I can find it. I'm not going to use the shape tape. I'm going to actually use the, um, the Maybelline one. And I'm just going to use the smallest amount to clean that up. That's the completed look. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I It's been a really long time since I've done a tutorial, but I'm, I'm feeling it again, you guys. I really hope you guys liked it. Um, it's not as hard as it looks like it's going to be, so definitely let me know if you guys recreate it or you, you know get inspired by it. Um, tag me on Instagram, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, the link, I'll link everything that I've used down below, and until next time, bye guys.